Wednesday night service. And let me tell you, we are on fire here and we are so excited. But you know what? I just have to take a few moments and give you some very important information. This season, this Christmas season, you know, it's really great to get all prepared and call all your family and touch point. It's just a wonderful season. But the icing on the cake, the cherry on the cupcake, the sprinkles on the cookies is when you and your family celebrate Christmas with your church family. And let me tell you, this Sunday is going to be amazing. You know, Jesus is the reason for the season. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. So Sunday, this coming Sunday at our 1030 service, we have probably the first in the history. Is it in the history? Or for a long time? Glad Tidings Children's Church is going to be doing a play. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> Pray for Nicole. She's, uh, she's a little nervous. <laughs> Not only are we going to have our special children's performance, but we're also going to have special music from our band, our wonderful band, which you will just be so blessed. And then I'm going to do um, a dramatic presentation through the eyes of Mary. Jody Ann. So, Jody Ann. Yes, sir. She's a professional actor. She's done it all over the United States. I'm telling you, she's going to bring the bomb. Come on, everybody. Bam. She I'm is the real it. deal. And then we also are going to have a special choir. Yes. We're going to listen. We're going to have our Filipino choir. I can't wait. No, no, I'm not done I'm yet. I'm so excited. I am not done yet. Our Filipino choir with one white guy in it. Come on, everybody. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're very funny. So that is all coming this Sunday. Call your friends. Bring your family. Make the effort. It really is the top of the of the season and then after the service you can see pastors all excited about the potluck <laughs> he's like don't forget the pot uh, potluck so that's sunday and then we won't have service on wednesday but we will have our christmas eve candlelight service and it isn't Christmas without a Christmas Eve candlelight service. That'll be at 6 p.m. It'll only be one hour. Throw the babies in the car. Come here and let's celebrate the season the right way. Then we won't have a Wednesday night on the 29th, but we will have a New Year's Eve celebration at 10 p.m. All of this information is on our website, and it's on our ladies' magazine. I'm telling you, we are going to have a great season of celebrating Jesus' birth. And speaking of celebrating, let's just get a good start right now. Are you guys ready? Okay, let's do it.
kingdoms bow down and the seas will roar at the sound your name I sing for joy at the works of your hand forever I love you forever I'll stay And you shall understand things that have been mysteries to you of the past. For I will put a spirit of revelation upon all those who will draw nigh to the Lord. Draw near to me, says the Lord. Let your heart be moved. Let your spirit be alive. And let you know that your God reigns. And your God has a purpose and a plan that is beyond your understanding at this time but I will surely reveal to my people the things that are coming to pass and loan to you says the Lord oh just rejoice just rejoice and come into my presence again and again and again and I will change you from glory to glory and from strength to strength for I will have a strong people People in this hour says the Lord and I will have a people that will hear my voice and is there not a stirring in the heavens is there not a moving of my spirit on the earth it is the hour of visitation it is the hour and the time to receive from the hand of the Lord therefore lift up your eyes lift up your hearts lift up your hands and and give glory to God who lives and reigns and brings to pass his word in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Lift your voices, hallelujah. Oh, lift your voices, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, hallelujah. 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 Oh, you are so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, lift your voices, hallelujah. Hallelujah, in our mind and in our and Hallelujah. I want to stay in the flow, but I want to capitalize on the power of unity in this house. The power of unity. There's no great here. There's no small. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter who your mama is. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your vocabulary or education. But the King of Kings resides in this house again. And we have opened the door, listen to me, to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The door is wide open to the Holy Spirit. Just the power of unity. For one on the worship team, or all the staff for one, and the church is one. Nobody's against somebody. Nobody's mad at somebody. Hallelujah. You know, you can't take a hunting dog and tie him up. Listen to me. They're made to run. I just want to say this. This house is made to worship. It's designed to worship. If we can't worship and flow in the Holy Ghost, all we're going to do is bark at each other. Slap somebody. Come on, Eric. That's all we're going to do is bark, 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 bark at each other. Hallelujah. But glory to God. This is all right, isn't it? Hallelujah. There's going to be a lot of people move here because they're going to hear that they found a place where God can move again. You trust me. Just trust me, glory to God. I um, I don't want to embarrass anybody, and I think your name. I met you Sunday. I've seen you before. Um, I think your name is Jeff. I think that's your name. Yes. I'm not sure. A strong guy. What is it? Mike. Hallelujah. Just step out in the aisle. I, I, I thought about you this week, and I'm a busy man, trust me. But I just kept thinking about you, thinking about you. And I really had good thoughts. And I just, in my heart, I said, this is really a good man. He, he, he doesn't have any agenda. He has one desire, that people are born again, touched by heaven. When I thought about you, I kept hearing this word that you have a great desire because you are a true evangelist. Most evangelists aren't evangelists. They just want meetings and they go from church to church because they want to take a collection. You know what I'm talking about. But you really want people to get born again and saved. You're just different. Like you have an anointing of a real evangelist. You're obsessed. But it's like you've been muted but the problem is that you don't have something to say. Listen to me closely. You discern that this is God. That they haven't been able to hear. There's been a deafening to the gospel. But the Lord's going to use you prophetically. And you're going to talk to people. And they're for the first time in their life, they're going to hear the wonders of Jesus. They've heard religion. There's like a wax built up. And they've heard religion. They don't want to hear any of that. And they, they, they can't figure you out. And so they want to categorize you as one of them. So their ears have been plugged. But I'm telling you right now that there's going to be a sound from heaven that's going to fill your mouth. And it won't sound like anybody else. It'll sound like the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And there'll be a penetration. 
And those that you couldn't bring to a normal church, you'll be able to bring here, one after another after another. I see one row filled up and then another row filled up, another, and I hear a herald that the king is back in the house. And there shall be dancing in this house and celebration in this house. And the shackles shall come off, people. Lift your hands in this place. Hallelujah. There shall be the joy of the Lord, joy unspeakable and full of gladness. People who are addicted will be, they've been addicted for years and years. It shall be broken in the name of Jesus under the power of God. And Father, release this man to be an evangelist. Hallelujah. 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 Guide his steps, every step. Don't let his strength be disappointed. And son, do not worry about what appears to be rejection, for I will speak to them the word you gave them in the night, and they can't get away from it, and they'll come to me, says the Lord. Woo! It's okay, church. Say it with me. Woo! Oh, it's a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, orange is back. Come on, tell them that right now. Hallelujah. Orange is back. They're telling me orange is the new black. You've been looking at these pews and saying, black, orange. But I want to let somebody know, orange is back. Hallelujah. Glory is back. The Holy Ghost is back. The gifts of the Spirit are back. Hallelujah. Praise and worship is back. Singing in the Spirit is back. Baptism in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues is back. Hallelujah. Slain in the Spirit is back. Words of knowledge is back. Words of wisdom is back. People being delivered is back. Hallelujah. <laughs> I talked to a good man in 18 years ago. He just didn't feel it for me to come here. He just didn't feel it. He's really a good man. And I went and thanked him. I went and thanked him. I said I wasn't humble enough back then. Oh, but God, how many have the fear of God now? <laughs> Come on, everybody. How, how many, I want somebody to say here, how many do not have 18 years? Let me see your hands right now. Hallelujah. How many want to just fake like you're obedient? Hallelujah. Oh, God's in this place. Isn't it wonderful again? Hallelujah. You come here on Wednesday and you set your watch because you can't wait till Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, we're not going to trick them on uh, Sunday. What do you mean by that? We're not going to be so stiff with programs that they think we're one thing. I want to let you know there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of visitors, a lot of family members. And we're going to shout. And we're going to dance in the aisle. And we're going to celebrate. We're not going to trick them. How many know what a trick is? Yeah, a trick is, we, hello, friends. It's so good you came to our Christmas celebration at Glad Tidings. We're not going to do that. Let me tell you what we're going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to Glad Tidings. Hallelujah. I won't say, excuse some people are dancing. I'm going to say, dance with them. Hallelujah. Man, God's in this place. Glad tidings can't be anything but glad tidings. It can't. There's some great denominations. We just can't be part of them. They do a lot of things better than us. But we got to do what we're called to do. <laughs> Pastor Gordon started prophesying, and I said, the Lord's returning. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I, she, she just started prophesying. I just like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. And I looked around. I couldn't find her. <laughs> come on. You can laugh at church a little bit. She's all right. She loves me. That was the word. How, come on, somebody. That was the word of the Lord over the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She's done such a tremendous job and taking care of all these missionaries. You know, I would just get off drugs and become a missionary if she's overseeing it. Man. You don't catch this wave to be a missionary here. You're really going to miss it. You hear what I said? Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, we're going to give over a quarter million dollars to missions this year. That's not bad in COVID. Let me ask you this question. This next year, should we give 500000 or a million? Hallelujah. I'm serious. Where's your faith? All you tremblers, where's your faith? 
Hallelujah. It's going to be big, big year. Glory. To, it's going, I said it's going to be a big year. Hallelujah. 22 is going to be cool. 21 wasn't that fun. Hallelujah. It's getting better and better and better, isn't it? All right, everybody. Put your teeth in and smile somebody. Don't touch them, but just smile to somebody. Say, God is good. Come on, everybody. God is so good. Hey, ushers, would you help us, all the ushers, just give everybody an envelope. I've got my offering here. You guys, don't, don't take an offering and then fake like you put money in it. We know you tithe because too much money's coming in. So don't, 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 don't. Don't look like, don't have to fake like you are. I know you are. And some of you give it on phone and online. All our family online, you can e-transfer or send it to 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia in heaven. Or you can drop it off at the box. The giving has been wonderful. A glad tidings, it really has. It's been a supernatural year. I think we're up 47%. Would someone praise the Lord? Hey, look, look at me. If I say we're up 47%, that means you got more money. <laughs> Hallelujah. It means that God's blessed you. How many this year, honestly, that God has either sustained you in the pandemic or he's blessed you? Let me see your hands right now. Wonderful. Good. Really good. That really encourages me. Uh, I fast and I pray and I stand with people. This is their hard-earned money. Isn't it hard-earned money? Hallelujah. How many of you don't go to work and tell your boss, eh, I'm here for fun? <laughs> you know, it's hard-earned money, and we respect it. We have a, a great team that uh, really manages it well. We're doing really good. I'm really proud to say, too, what we give to missions. We're never going to hire a, a, someone we pay to do missions, or we're never going to use money for fundraisers. Every penny is going to be directly to the mission field. Is that all right with everybody? Every penny. Every penny is going to go. 10% of anything that we have a monastery and we've had different people use a building, 10% of that goes right into our missions. Anything, every offering. Tonight, 10% go right into missions. And the trustees really heard from the Lord. That's been really the secret sauce. Everything that comes in. And it's kind of funny, during that time, made a decision to do it in the worst time. How many know God can make your worst times the best times? really can. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand together online. Why don't you just push your buttons and smile and give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for your people, their obedience. This is a moment of honor we give to you. We really honor you, not in theory, but in sacrificial obedience. Bless the people now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. How many know that in Vancouver downtown, if you lose your wallet, that's not good? Let me see your hands. How many know that's not good? I, um, uh, I'm pretty meticulous, but my wallet was borrowed. And uh, I had a check in it, too. All my credit cards and just some important documents. And we just prayed. And this beautiful man comes to the church, rings the doorbell, and said, I have this for you. I just thought about that. You know, I was okay. I was all right. It's all good. It's good. Jody, you know, I'd rather have it stolen than have my wife have it. So, so that's all. Come on, you can laugh in church, everybody. Come on, somebody. You can laugh in church. You know, you know. But, you know, not one thing was done. Not one thing was taken. And uh, Edward was with me. Did I throw my arms around and bless that man? Did I do that? Just bless him. Hallelujah. And I, I want to let you know that some of you, your peace has been stolen. Your optimism has been stolen. Your swagger has been stolen. I'm just going to tell you, God's going to offer it back. In his presence, God gives you things back. Hallelujah. 
that you can have new tears. You can have tears of the redeemed of the Lord. Tears that go down your face. I almost didn't make it, but I made it because of God. Hallelujah. I want you to just for a moment stand your feet, and I want you to give your God a hand clap. Come on, give your God a hand. No, 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 no. Not a golfer's clap. This is not the GPA. Hallelujah, or the PGA. This is God Almighty. Why don't you thank God, hallelujah, for what he's done in your life? I, 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 I shan't be long tonight, but I've really needed Jesus to show up in my life sometimes. I really have. I don't need a fake prayer, fake faith. I've needed Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. And God anointed Jesus. I needed the anointed one in my life. I needed him in my life. Where I could hardly even pray, I could hardly function, I could hardly think right. And God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. It literally means the oil of the presence of heaven is on Jesus. And I need that oil of Jesus in my life. How many need Jesus to show up? Just to show up in your life. I'm going to take opening, and I'm going to talk to you about business for a moment. We, I'm going to tell you that business is spiritual. Hello. And you can't have your business and God not in it. You're going to need Jesus to show up in your business. And God's giving ideas to people. But for those ideas to germinate, you're going to have to right now say, I'm giving you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in advance. Lord, I make you the king of this idea, this situation. I've had more people that God's begun, the one, the anointed one, showed up in their business. And Pastor Shot wants you to know right now, there's an anointing in this house for business. Not hype, but business. Godly, honest, hardworking, 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 hardworking business where God anoints it. This is one of our historical wells. Some of the most godly people in all of Canada have come out of this church. I'm not telling you you're going to be a millionaire, but I will tell you this. If God anoints your business, you'll make a difference. I'm going to say it again. You'll make a difference. You will make a difference. Not a small difference. The three, four, five of you business people have a young couple. We want to send them for one year to the mission field. How many want them to think about what they're doing and not think about money? And God will anoint you. God will give you an idea. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, worship team. John chapter 21 John chapter 21, there was some hooligans. If you're a little older, you don't know what that mean. It means fist fighting drunks, like some of your family members. And the Bible says that Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. Verse 1, after these things, John chapter 21, Jesus, what? Showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. In this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, Cana, and Galilee, the son of Zebedee, two other disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. Someone says that's business. Say, someone says that's business. I was a commercial fisherman in Alaska. I took a plane from Seattle to Anchorage then I got on a little plane and I flew from Anchorage to a place called Knack Knack. And from Knack Knack, we got on a little plane 
and flew down on the beach when the tide was out to a place called Iggy Gig. Someone say Iggy Gig. It was so horrible there that the bears would cry because the tundra had so many mosquitoes and they'd bite their nose. It was a horrible place. It was a place you loved to be down on the ocean with the wind blowing off it because it kept the mosquitoes off you. But I want to let you know that the fish are in the sea and it was worth it because I, made, I was engaged to Jody Ann and I made a whole lot of money for my baby, baby. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Rather than buying a ring from Walmart out of the gum machine, I bought a real one that sparkled. But it was key that what? You got to catch the fish. You have to catch the fish. If you don't have fish, now I want to let you know right here, when Peter said I'm going fishing, he said this, and I'll put it in a little street term, I'm making money for my honey. He was making money. He was serious about it. He said, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. Someone say nothing. nothing. I, I, I want to let you know, you cannot have palm olive hands and be a fisherman. You can't. Guys, you can't have a pedicure and be a fisherman. This is a whole nother world. And when you pull that net in, your arms fall off. I don't care how strong you are. It's more than you really can do. Your hands are wiped out. Your back is wiped out. But what did they do? They fished all night. And what happened? They got nothing. They got nothing. I'm going to say this to you. It's good doctrine. God wants to bless you so you can think about the kingdom. No, this is this for real. I'm not one of those crazy prosperity guys. I don't believe in a poverty God. I believe in a God that provides so you can do his will. And so now it's all night deal. They are spent. Just to stay up all night was difficult, but the Bible says they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered rhetorically, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat. Now I want to let you know what a fisherman thinks. Who is this loud mouth who slept in telling us what to do? We're fishermen. We know where to fish and what to do. But they had nothing. I'm going to tell every one of you right now, God will tell you something to do that you really don't want to do. <laughs> he will tell you something you really don't want to do. And he's standing at the shore and he's telling them what to do. And a lot of you, I want to let you know, when you do what God tells you to do, there is going to be a catch. Even though you don't have strength, I need somebody to yell at me and say, go ahead, preach. I know it's Wednesday night, but I need somebody in this place to say, go ahead, let me have it. Hallelujah. My arms are tired. My back is tired. I'm exhausted. Nothing's working in my life. Hallelujah. My wife spends too much. I need somebody to really yell now. And now he gets his word. Great deacon. We had a prophetic moment, and God gave us a real word for him to start a company. Oh, when you get the word, you dance, shout, sometimes you even spin. You just got this word. But the problem is with the word, you still got to get up at 5 in the morning and do it. So a lot of you get a word, you spin, you, you dance, you shout, but you just don't get up. We
we get this big word. He was making back then about 30,000 years. He personally made $125,000. That was 25 years ago. That was pretty good. It was U.S., so let me convert it to Canadian. That's 800,000. So here, here he is, he's making money, honey. His wife's cooking him the big meals. You're my man. Oh, you're wonderful. She's driving a new car that actually stops and goes. Then I get a phone call. He has nine of the young men working for him in the church. He's paying them well, treating them right. But if you're around me, you train young people. You have to know, we might throw you off the roof. You better work hard. I need some of the staff to help me right now. I need some of the staff. Someone say, he's telling the truth. Oh, there goes Josh. I just threw him out of the balcony. I expect him to work hard. And he calls me. He's a good man. He said, Pastor, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm through. And I, I didn't think he did anything dumb. I said, what's up? My partner. It's really interesting. God gave him a prophetic word, but he never told him to have a partner. Never told him that. Told him to start the business. Well, you know what the partner did. He cleaned the bank account out. You got you to think business. Didn't pay the suppliers. If you don't pay the suppliers, you're not going to get any supplies. So he's in trouble with them. He cleared it out. They had about a quarter of a million dollars in there. And he just spent it foolishly, bought things. And then he said, I'm leaving the company. So I go, I, I just felt led I need to be with them. So I go, I go with them. And there, she's crying, trying not to. She's trying to be brave. My husband worked so hard. And he, I can't believe he did this to him. And she was so soft-hearted. Oh, he paid cash for the car. I'll just sell the car, hon. I believe in you. And he's just kind of pacing. I don't know what you can do. And I said, you know, I believe Jesus is going to give us a word to throw the net on the other side. No, you need to hear this tonight. I believe God can still have a say in this. And I said, I think we just should drop to our knees. Because we really need Jesus right now. We don't need a hum uh, we don't need gravy. We don't need a hype preacher. We need Jesus because God has anointed him. And from the shore, even though we we're tired, he brought them a word that what? Filled their net. Father, show them what to do. And speak his name to some company. And she just threw herself on the ground. Please, Lord. You know. He calls me the next day. He said, Pastor, you will not believe it. I want to make this announcement. I am a believer. I said, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. He said, I've been doing residential, and I'm making 5000 here, and 10000 here, and 11000 here, and 15000 here. There's this company I really wanted. It's commercial, and I have, I have bonding for commercial. And they said their guy burned them, and they want to pay me $2.2 million to do it, and the profit will be one five. How many want to know pastor's counsel? Put your hand up. How many know? Don't pray about it. No, we'll try that again over here. Don't pray about it. I'll come back over here. Don't pray about it. Get up and cast your net on the other side. Hallelujah. God just intervened on your behalf. This is one of many miracles coming your way. You need Jesus to show up. Even though he seems a long ways away, he'll speak to you. Listen to me. He'll tell you when to sell and get out. He'll tell you when to hold on and believe in what you're doing. You, how many want to be real business people, real ones? He'll tell you when to fire people because you're carrying them on your back. And I'll just yell it at you right now. If you can't fire, you can't lead. 
God's not, can I just let it go? He's not called you to be a handout. He's called you to be a business that's prosperous and glorifies God. <laughs> pastor Jody Ann's my co-pastor. I'm gonna let you know right now. She'll give me a pink slip. You're fired. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. I walk into Pastor Gordon office and I'll, I'll tell her so far so good but you better improve come on come on everybody hallelujah have that spirit on you yeah. Jesus spoke from the shore mm -hmm. then Jesus said to them children have you any food they answered him no he said to them cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some I love the word, so they cast it. And now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Let me tell you what that, can I tell you what the Greek word means here? Money for your honey. Most historians, historians believe that that catch was worth about three to six months worth of income. Jesus shows up. You know, I, I love missions. I love what we do. But I love it when he comes into your business, into your life, into your world. And then when he talks to you, no wonder you dance and shout in church because he blessed you Monday, he blessed you Tuesday, he blessed you Wednesday, he blessed you Thursday, he double blessed you on Friday, he blessed you on Saturday, so now you're shouting and dancing on Sunday. They couldn't even drag it in. And I love what it says here. I text one of the business people today, I said, meditate on this because I believe God's going to bless him so that he can't even drag it in. Therefore, that whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. Someone say, it's the Lord. No, that's not good enough. Say, it's the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his armor garment, put off his armored garment, garment and removed it and plunged into the sea. Ha! Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to someday, we're going to have some Holy Ghost stage jumping. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. He just jumped. He didn't even think about it because when he heard it was the Lord, I want somebody to hear this dancing song today. I, I want somebody to praise the Lord today. When you know it's God, you need to what? Jump in. I'm starting to become one of my favorite preachers. Because if you won't amen me, I'm going to amen myself. I'm preaching today. There's an old school thing. I'm blessing myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He plunged into the sea. <laughs> the other disciples came in the little boat. <laughs> but he jumped in, baby. Verse 11, Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land. I love this. Full of large fish. I fish for red salmon. They're, they're about five, six pounds. But there was a dumb, dumb coho. And this coho shouldn't have been with these guys. And he, he just kind of had a small brain. I'm sure he had somewhat a good heart. And I had all, but the dumb coho got stuck in my net. And the coho weighed 75 pounds. And I said to myself, let's not sell this one. And I said to the coho, your salmon steak. <laughs> it says this. Although there were so many. This is what God does. The net didn't break. 
We need to hear more business from the pulpit. We need more prayers. I always hear us praying for the missionaries, and absolutely we should. But we need to pray for the hardworking people, for people, God's people. I cannot tell you. I had young preachers and a young staff, and the church began to grow. Went from 500 to 1,000, then to 2,000. And my staff started coming in a little late. A little late. Now, the church got up at 5.30. The people got up at 5.30. But my staff got up about 9, watched the Disney Channel, come open at about 10 o'clock. Sneak out, have a two-hour lunch, then sneak out about 3, you know, because they had, well, Gilligan Island's on at 4. And I just saw this thing on. I said, you don't respect God. Oh, yes, we do. You don't respect God. Oh, yes, we do. No, you don't. What do you mean, Pastor Sean? I said, they get up at 530. You get up at 930. Then you want them to call you pastor. I need somebody to shout me down. You've never heard this from the pulpit. It's true. They give 10%. Some give 20%. Some give 30%. You get a fat salary, and you come in late. How many want to hear Pastor Shot? If you ever come in late again, you're fired. But I did it nice. How many want to hear I did it? How many want to hear I did it? Listen closely. You're fired. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh. Amen. I'm going to outwork every business person because I respect God. We'll try that again. I'm going to outwork them because I respect God's house. How about you? I'm going to pray them into the other side with their net. Help me, somebody in this place. Hallelujah. And they are going to have troubles dragging their fish up the beach to count them. Glory to God because Jesus showed up. I know some of you are kind of on your heels. You shouldn't talk to the pastors that way. But I don't think we have pastors. I think we have hirelings. Hello? You can ask all the trustees. I never once asked, what, well, what are you going to pay me? I never did it. Because God pays me. I said, God pays me. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. God pays me. Didn't negotiate if I'm going to come. Who in their right mind negotiate to come during COVID? <laughs> well, promise me we'll be open on Easter at least. I want to let you know, if we weren't open on Christmas, I'm going to ho, ho, ho the devil with praise. Come on, everybody. I'm going to preach and prophesy anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe that God has given Pastor Jody and I unusual strength because we've loved him and loved his house and loved his people. I believe that I've got better looking since I've come here. Come on, somebody help me right now. Hallelujah. I, I can at least tell myself that. I just enjoy myself. Hallelujah. I know I had this jacket let out and it's tight again. Come on, somebody. I'm blessed. It says this. This is a great statement to every business person. Look what it says down in verse 15. Do you love me more than these? What is the ask business people? Do you love me? Do you love me? We're not taking an offering tonight. This is not where we're going. We work hard. We ask God to bless us. And we love him. We love him. I'm making, Jody Ann and I are making 1979. We're making almost $100,000. I'm driving, someone, someone grab a hold. I'm driving a brand new Cordova. 
It was yellow with a camel roof with two-tone camel and brown leather interior. Help me, somebody. Cordova. And then we went into the ministry. We went from 100000 down to $200 a week, and I'm driving a gremlin. Come on, everybody. A gremlin. Come on, everybody. I, I, I feel a gremlin. Uh, the gas... The gas gauge didn't work, so I'd have to slam on the brakes and listen to the glass slosh. <laughs> do you love me? I'm going to ask you tonight, do you love him? Do you love him more than these? And then Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Send missionaries. Build my house. Make this place a refuge for people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what he asked us to do. I believe God is speaking to some of you. I believe it with all my heart. You're tired. You're worn out. Your arms ache. You don't have any strength. And God's saying to you, put it on the other side. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to tell you right now, God is speaking to people. And there is a word where the anointed one, Jesus, is showing up in your life. Would you take a moment and just thank the Lord for his goodness in your life? Would you do that, somebody? Would you thank the Lord? Just take a moment right now and just give God a hand clap. Come on, somebody. Give him a shout. He's been so good to us. If you would flow with me, let me take you to uh, another important thing. We got to lower broken people to Jesus. We got to climb a roof for them and get them lowered in front of Jesus. Somehow there was a group that loved this dude. It's found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, now it happened. On a certain day, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of the town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power, listen, of the Lord was present to heal. Let's say it again. There are times where the power of the Lord is present at glad tidings. We are walking into one of those times where God is going to supernaturally speak to people, deliver people, put a song in their heart, but it's a crowded place and we've got to bring them. Hear this word. Then behold, men brought a bed with a man who was paralyzed to lay before him. And when they could not find a way to bring him in, they went up to the housetop. Through the tile. Into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said to them, watch this. God will see your faith when you bring people. At some point, church, it can't always be me, myself, and I. At some point, if God has touched you and blessed you, you must bring someone. And they will be paralyzed. Let me give you a modern day paralyzed. I don't want to go. I had a, a guy that, uh, I'm the pastor and, he said he saw me on television. I said, hey, why don't you come Sunday night? And I want him to come Sunday night because it was wilder. We'll try that again. I, I wanted him to come Sunday night. It's packed, but it was just wild. Hallelujah. It was just shouting and dancing. Hallelujah. They wouldn't stop worshiping. He said to me, are you one of those shouting churches? I said, yes, and yelling. He said to me, I mean, do they dance and fall down and all that? Uh-huh. 
He said, I don't, I, I, I don't think so. I said, you need to come. He said, what will you give me? I said, I'll buy you a 24-pack of beer if you come. Don't do this. He said, you're the preacher. You'll go and personally buy and give it to me? Uh-huh. I'm not going to buy it in advance. I'll take you to the store afterwards. He said, I'll come. Someday you got to lure him through the roof or offer him beer. So he comes. And he just the whole time sits in the back row, just stares at everybody. Just stares. And I say, hey, my buddy's here. My good buddy's here. And he goes, oh, God. I said, come on up. He comes forward. I'll never forget, he comes forward. And he leans forward and he goes, beer? And I go, can I just pray for you? And he said, yeah, sure, I'm open to that. And I had wild grandmas in the church. Come on, Grandma, come on, help me. I said, can I have my sweet little cookie bacon grandmas come and pray with me? Holly, my sweet cookie ba and And you can see some of them. I remember one of them was really loud. She just, thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, ah. And another one just should have had a I said, come on, Grams. Let's just pray for my good friend. I took him by the hand. The usher couldn't get him, and he hit the ground. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And you know it's God when he wasn't looking for an usher. He just bounces on the ground. Hallelujah. Head hits. Everything hits. He bounces. Hallelujah. He couldn't move. In front of the whole church, I just leaned over and said, no beer. Come on, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God touched him. But you got to what? Get on the roof. You got to get on the roof. I'm not shaming you tonight, but some of you haven't invited someone to church since Pastor Reg Lazell was here. His last sermon was 1970. You haven't invited somebody, hallelujah, we need to be people right now that the Holy Spirit will lead you to someone who's broken, crushed. They might not live another day without you bringing them and lure them to the roof. This is not a club. This is not a place for us. This is a house for sinners. Broken people. I'm not going to say what this one guy said. I had another guy come. And he walked up to me afterwards and someone brought him. He goes, man, that was a H-E sermon. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. That was one of the blast blankety blank sermons I've ever heard. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. They won't say the right things. They won't do the right things. But I want to let you know right here in the house, the Holy Spirit's speaking to people. Yeah. I'm having couples come up to me, Pastor. We, we, God just talked to us, and we've been living together, and we're going to get married. Amen. Come on, that's beautiful. I just said, I'm so proud of you, kids. You can start having holy hugs and kisses. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. It's good to see what God has done. we got to lower people through the roof. Jesus. Jesus healed. Because what? The power of the Lord is in this house to heal. Jesus is glorified in this house. I will close with this. I have a dear friend. I love him. My best friends are from third world countries because they hunger for God. You can look up on the internet. His name is Bishop Thomas Muthe. M-U-T-H-E-E, -E, Muthe. He has about 2,500 people. He had a tin roof, animals in and out of the church, mud floor. He, prayer meeting always has 1,000 people. Shouting to God. And I go there. I'm the big preacher. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I guess they think I'm important. I don't know if I was a novelty white dude. I don't know what's going on. But they thought oh, I was great. I walk into that anointing, and I said to myself, an idiot could preach here. The anointing is so rich. An idiot could preach here. And I, I go. 
He doesn't have money, but he has riches. Riches. And the Spirit of God said, I'm going to give them a miracle building. The power was there to do the impossible. How many want to be in a house that the power is here to do the impossible? And I start prophesying this word that I'm speaking on your behalf to a government. Can you see it? They're coming. They're coming. And they began to shout in faith. And all the money will come from another nation. It will be given to you. And you will build the house of God. And he will receive glory in it. Now, Bishop Muthe is not average. He was the guy that went to Wasilla, Alaska, and there was a little girl there, young lady, he prophesied over and said, your name shall be known around the world. And that little girl was a girl named Sarah Palin, a little girl from Wasilla who ran for vice president, and her name was around the world. It was a prophetic word. This guy is big leagues. So I want you to know, everybody look at me real quick. When I prophesy to him, help me somebody, I don't want to blow it. This is a real man of God here. Did I do it right? I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. i just like, oh, God. And I got this word, and I looked at Thomas, and I go, Bishop, I don't know if I should give this word. Give it. It is God. You won't take me to the airport if I don't give it, will you? You must give it. Say it. Wince. And I just prophesied this word. A year later, the Finnish government came and said, we have a million dollars and we want to build your sanctuary and build your trades. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We want to do The presence of the Lord was there to do miracles. And they built it. And Thomas is so cool. I'll have him come sometime, hallelujah. Tom is so cool, he gave $150,000 back, said, oh, we don't need all of it. Hallelujah. Because he had faith in God that God would give it to him whenever he needed it. Stand with me tonight, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. And the power of the Lord is present to speak. And the power of the Lord is in this house to deliver people. And the power of the Lord, the spirit of the heaviness, is coming off people. Lift your hands with me in faith right now. And the power of the Lord is in this house. The power of the Messiah, Jesus, is in this place. And you've come tonight and you've wondered, oh God, would you help me? I've lost my strength. I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, God, I, I feel like I, I took a wrong turn. I, I've tried and tried tried and tried but I declare the word of the Lord is in this place and he shall whisper to you what to do put your net on the other side ha, hallelujah father I come against discouragement I come against confusion I come against depression I come against the lies that savage your wonderful people and I declare you are the people of the most high God and your comings and your goings are blessed by the Lord hallelujah and father tonight by faith we pray we pray for those who need you they need to be here and Lord I pray right now God will put a face of somebody on your heart right now and declare in the name of Jesus they're coming to be touched by Jesus hallelujah we thank you Jesus oh we thank you Lord hallelujah Oh, let there be a song of victory in the house. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
just declare it right now. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. My life belongs to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just declare he's the lover of your soul he's the lover of your life because of the blood of Jesus you are free and liberated to sing and believe once again we plead the blood of Jesus God thank you Pastor Jody Ann and I, Pastor Gordon, can be in this house. For your temple is beautiful. And your house is full of those called by heaven to give praises to your name. We thank you, God. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not belaboring this, but I want the spirit of heaviness to be gone. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you now. So Jesus. Jesus' wonderful name. Let's come with our praises on Sunday. Can we do that, everybody? Can we, can we do that? Would a few of you just throw your shoes, shoes off on Sunday and just celebrate? Hallelujah. Can we just, can we get free? Come on, everybody. Can we get free? I want someone, just some guy, just take their toupee and just, come on, Hallelujah. Let's just be free, 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 free. Hey, the new year, we're going to do something. Glory to God. We're going to have a week of prayer and fasting. Is that all right, everybody? Hallelujah. My father's house is a house of prayer. So for some of the grandmas and some of those little bit, a little harder for them to drive at night, oh, we're not going to let you slip out. We have prayer meetings. At 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the morning. So don't don't be staying home watching soap. Don't do that. Hallelujah. And then we're going to have a Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. We're going to have from 7 to 8 o'clock Holy Ghost prayer right here in the sanctuary for a week. Is that all right there, everybody? Is that all right there, everybody? Is that all right there, everybody? Hallelujah. I said, is that all right there, everybody? Hallelujah. We'll just saturate this place in prayer. Hallelujah. It'll, it'll take us to a, a new level. You pray for me tomorrow. I have the privilege of my life. I get to stand over the grave of a true prophet of God and, and just share my respect. So Pastor Dave Huber went to be with the Lord. He's my hero. He's my pastor. And of all the people in the world, I, I get to stand over it. And I just sense it'll be a special moment. So how many will pray for me, please? Would you do that? I so appreciate it. Hallelujah. Well, planted in the house of the Lord, you will flourish in the courts of our God. Let's celebrate out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.